The LG V50 was my favorite Android phone of 2019. Does the 2020 version, the LG V60 Thin Q 5G, uh, hold up? Let's discuss. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JT. This is painfully honest. Hey! Ew! Tech so honest it hurts. This is your first time here. Thank you for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back again. Thank you very much. It took me a little while to get to this review, but that's in part because I really wanted to give the V60 a fair shake. End of review. I'm still not wearing pants. This is a lot of phone. LG phones rarely get that fair shake from the bigger tech YouTubers who have other things to talk about, I guess. A lot of the time, LG phones get kind of a cursory first impressions, maybe a review, but not too much more from the folks who draw millions of views. So I feel almost personally responsible to go a little bit deeper. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the stuff that I can. If I wanted this review to be short and sweet, I would just say this about the LG V60. It has a headphone jack. Not just a headphone jack, but it has a quad DAC in there that pumps out enough juice for even the least sensitive headphones that you could possibly find. Uh, my Sennheiser HD 600s are my benchmark for testing power and quality of a DAC slash amp. And the V60, well, no. We're saving this part for later because this is important stuff to talk about. And there's a lot more to cover before we get to just the headphone jack on the V60. It's not all roses and sunshine when it comes to the V60. Compromises were made. But in a year when the competitors' phones are rising, like, just into the stratosphere, uh, is it possible that you can make a few compromises and still deliver a top-of-the-line experience? The Galaxy S20 Ultra compares to the V60 in size and power. It doesn't. Ha this doesn't have a giant stovetop on the back of it. But this phone costs six hundred dollars less than the Galaxy S20 Ultra. It costs three hundred dollars less than the Galaxy S20. And the S20 Ultra? Well, it only has one screen. This one has two. And make no mistake, the V60 competes with the S20 Ultra and all the other super phones that are coming out this year, but whereas LG has kind of marked time over the past couple of years and their design has been kind of boring and the Android skin has done more harm than good, in 2020, they seem to be willing to go off the beaten path and do something different. How's that working out for them? Well, surprisingly well. Actually, I have to make an admission here. When I heard the specs of the V60 and that they were gonna do a couple of things a little bit less than top spec, I was kind of bummed. Like the Galaxy Note series, the V series has always been the kitchen sink phone for me. It has everything and some of the best cameras, uh, great OLED screen, all that kind of stuff. Plenty of power, expandable storage, a lot more. The V50 was the first phone, I believe, to be sold in the US, or at least on Verizon, as a 5G phone, which is still pointless for 99% of everybody. But this year, LG is dialing back the screen resolution to 1080p when the competitors are going up to 1440 and 120 hertz screens. Never mind that most of the time, those 120 hertz screens require you to be at 1080, but that's a different video. And the screen, at 1080p is staying at a lowly pedestrian 60 hertz. It's a clear win for the competition, yes? And not so fast, my friends. The 1080p screen on the V60 is surprisingly good. I, I have to admit I'm partial to LG OLEDs because I've owned two LG OLED TVs and they're in incredible. But the screen on last year's V60 was always Pretty good, really uh, pretty good, but a little less vibrant than its Samsung counterparts. It was a fine looking screen, but the difference between the two was noticeable. The V60 on the other hand, I mean, this screen really pops. I like iPhone screens for their color fidelity, even if it doesn't always mean they look super impressive and, and stuff like that. And I enjoy Samsung screens because they're always so vibrant and everything pops off the screen and stuff looks like it's floating in the air. It's just really, really impressive. The LG displays have always been a notch down from that. And while I can't give them full credit because they haven't kept pace with the competition in terms of specs, sometimes specs don't matter as much as we give them credit for. This screen, this screen looks really good. Look at it. 
The Note series always had the S Pen to differentiate it from others, while the V series had the best headphone jack on a phone. In fact, the quad DAC on the V series has consistently competed with not only other phones, not really other phones, when they even had headphone jacks, but with higher end, purpose-built audio players. This year, the V60 retains that edge, even more so since the Note 10, the S10, and others are leaving the headphone jack behind. There's just not very many left. The phone has an under-the-screen fingerprint reader, which some people love, but I don't. Uh, I've never used one on any phone that I didn't turn off after like a week or so, and the V60s was no different. It was a little slow and finicky, and no matter how many times I scanned, no matter how many fingers, it just was, it just was a little fiddly. It wouldn't open, like, it wouldn't open reliably all the time, so I turned it off. Most of the time, I would use the fingerprint reader in concert with a uh, with a face ID or a face recognition thing, but there's no face recognition on this phone. That's another compromise uh, that LG decided to go for. So other than using a pin, my security options here are limited and it gets a little more cumbersome when you put the dual screen case on as well. However, the, the physical fingerprint reader that was on the back of last year's V50 was very good, very fast, very easy to use, and it's disappointing here uh, to not really see that and to have to go with something that is inferior in my perception. <laughs> Cosmetically, the phone is pretty understated. I mean, we've, it comes with the two colors. This is a pearlescent white. It's got some goldish aluminum around the edges, and then there's a dark blue color. Neither one would be my first choice. White is, the white is nice. I mean, it looks really nice. It's kind of a double shot color where it's it, it's all shimmery. I'm, I'm not a gold person. It's not a gold thing. It's a me thing. I just don't like gold, so I would have preferred a black option, but sometimes you just don't get what you want. The back of the phone, while made of glass, has a different feel than other glass sandwich phones. It feels somehow softer, like less sticky, less... It's hard to explain. It almost makes the phone feel like there's a plastic layer on the back, but there's not. Uh, the overall experience of holding the phone is really nice. I mean, it, it fits well in the hand, ladies. The front glass is flat, thankfully, with a slight chamfer around the edge, something we haven't really seen on a screen for quite a while. I remember that the older HTC phones, like the HTC One had that kind of thing going on, but it's been gone for a while and the chamfer actually gives the front of the screen a, a kind of classy look that, that makes it sort of fancy looking, but still very understated. The screen is 6.8 inches, which is huge. I mean, really, I, I, I came from using the, the new iPhone SE and this, <laughs> This is big. Just for um, comparison sake, this is the iPhone SE. And the, the oh, can't see it now, can you? And honestly, I like the size. It is a little heavy, but it's not, I've had heavier phones. It's challenging to get into some pockets. I'll give you that. You don't want to wear gym shorts and carry this thing around. When you put this dual screen case on, it gets even bigger, but I will say that when you're using the phone with the dual screen case, you're using it completely differently than you would almost any other mobile device. So it's hard to say that the extra bulk here is is terrible. I mean, it's there for a reason. I mostly found myself using the dual screen when I was just sort of hanging out, watching something, checking emails. I might have a YouTube video on the other side. It's true side-by-side -side multitasking instead of like picture-in-picture -picture or one app stacked on the other. None of those I've ever really been a big fan of. Each app gets its own screen, which which is nice. You can even set the dual screen when you put it on to open a specific app. So you always have that app. If that's the app you want on the dual screen, it's always open when you put it on. And in some apps like the camera app, you have the camera itself on the main screen here, and then you get a preview of the photos that you're taking on the second screen after you take them. So that eliminates the step of me having to like look, go look and see, did I get the picture? Do I have to take another one? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It ha that, that kind of thing goes on in a few different apps. And of course, the dual screen is pretty incredible for, uh, for gaming. Basically, the LG V60 is a um, 
is a Nintendo DS that's also a phone. Gameplay happens on the second screen up here while the main screen becomes your controller and no more having your fingers on top of your screen while you're trying to play a game, which is one of the reasons why I really don't play mobile games all that much. Uh, you can actually, actually this, this bottom screen becomes a controller that you can select from a, a few different controllers. You can make your own controller. Uh, it's like, you know, PS4, Xbox, Nintendo, uh, a, a steering wheel, a lot of different things and you can make your own it's really pretty slick and when there's a lot of gaming phones out there um that don't do this i wonder why gamers don't think more about this phone and i mean this phone should be able to handle it with eight gigabytes of ram and the snapdragon 865 cpu the v60 should handle just about anything that you throw at it with no problem it comes with 128 gigabytes of storage to start but it has the micro SD card expandability. There's some downsides to the dual screen case. It's not always practical to carry this thing around and to hold it. Uh, sometimes it makes on the go use a little bit more fiddly than it has to be. I found myself using it more around the house uh, when I knew I was just gonna be hanging out and doing either productivity stuff or media consumption type stuff. And when I wasn't, I would take the phone out and just use it as a phone. And both of those things were fine. It's, it's not hard to get in or out, just a couple of thingies. It slots in with USB-C and it's good to go. The case itself has this magnetic end that there's an adapter that comes from the USB-C. You plug the phone into the case via USB-C. That powers the screen. It's a pretty slick deal. I'm kind of disappointed that the Kindle app doesn't recognize there are two screens here and flow the book across both screens. I mean, when you that would be for me like the killer app. I would never have to have another device but this because um, yeah, I, I read a lot of books. It takes a while to get used to working with the dual screen and figuring out exactly how it works and how you do certain things. I've had the phone for three weeks and I'm still finding myself doing new stuff, setting up things, uh, figuring out new uses for the screen. This is really a very feature-packed phone. It's very in-depth and it takes a while to get used to it. The fact that they offer this $100 dual screen accessory is kind of mind-boggling to me. It never has there been a smartphone accessory with so much utility and such a reasonable cost. And when you factor in that the V60 with the dual screen only costs $900 total, that's $800 for the phone and $100 for the dual screen case, the LG V60 is by far the best value in a smartphone so far this year. I mean, compromises be damned, uh, this is a, a great deal. The Achilles heel of most Android phones is battery life, and it seems like no matter how big a battery a lot of Android manufacturers put in their phones, the battery will drain at just completely insane rates, but that is actually not the case with the V60. Uh, the battery life on the S20 Ultra was really good, but it is a big battery. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, battery life on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, Pro Max, those phones have the best in class batteries, but somehow the V60's battery is better than any Android phone, any Android phone I have ever used. The 5,000 milliamp hour battery doesn't hurt, but I've used a lot of phones with big batteries and none of them could come close to this. Without the dual screen, I'm getting two full days with room to spare, two full days with like 20, 30% left at the end of the second day. With the dual screen, I get about a day and a half before I have to charge it up, but still, that's, I've never had anything like that in an Android phone. Honestly, the best battery life I've ever seen in an Android phone, and the competition isn't even close. Finally, I just have to mention again that quad DAC headphone jack thing that's, uh, it's quite simply the best audio experience you're gonna find on a smartphone by a wide margin. Explaining how the quad DAC works and all that, I mean, that's a whole other video. And if you wanna see that video, let me know down in the comments and I will make a, a dedicated video to about how the audio works in this and, and how to get the best out of it. Uh, but for this review, just know that it's better than anything else that you can get. If you're somebody who has a really nice set of wired headphones, uh, that you spend a lot of money on and you appreciate that sound, then just go buy this phone. If you are an audio lover of any kind, just go buy this phone. For the life of me, I don't know how, why LG doesn't just shout this from the rooftops, but it is bar none, the V-Series bar none, the best 
phone for audio you can buy. Even the speakers on the V60 are some of the best that I've ever heard. I can hear stereo panning going back and forth while watching video. I mean, no matter how good the speakers are on any other phone that I've used, and a lot of, a lot of phones have good speakers, I've never before heard that kind of depth and, and separation in the stereo field coming from a set of onboard speakers. I mean, the speaker is on the bottom, and then the, the earpiece speaker. I don't know, I, I don't know how to I, I don't know how they do it. And here's the thing. I'm super deep into this review, and I realize now that I, I haven't even said anything about the camera. And, and like the quad DAC, it would take an, an entirely separate video to do the camera justice. A lot of people are saying that this camera is not good, and I'm here to tell you that that's not true. There is a lot of depth to this camera. The camera looks really good. If you want to see a more detailed camera video, then also let me know that down in the comments below. I'd be happy to, uh, happy to do that as well. LG this year also has a LG Pay, which is its own kind of same thing as Samsung Pay, where any, any sort of swipe card reader can use this. I haven't used it yet because I haven't left the house since I got the phone. I mean, it's COVID time. Sorry. I haven't tried it out, but if it works like Samsung's does, then it's, it's really cool and possibly better than Apple. Pay. Somehow, every year, LG puts out a banger phone that differentiates itself from all the rest of the phones out there with some really cool features, and no one pays it any attention. This year, they've doubled down and they've given you features like two screens and undercut the price for the rest of all the Android phones. And I mean, I know a lot of people don't think that this is a, like a, 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 a foldable device, but still, two screens for half the price, less than half the price, uh, yeah, less than half the price of a Galaxy Fold. In order to get there, LG has made a few compromises, but those compromises like the 1080p screen and, and things like that I, I don't really matter to me. I would have liked to have had uh, face unlock. I don't know why it's not there, but there it is. Despite those compromises, which I really doubt anyone will notice like on a day-to-day -day basis, the V60 is more phone than you could possibly expect. Like I said, I, there's still stuff, that I've been using this phone hard, there's still stuff that I have not been able to get to to figure out and to really become comfortable with. So I'm gonna have to do a follow-up later on review. People will pay twice the money without ever looking at something like the V60 and, and choose like the Samsungs and the OnePluses and the Apples and the Googles and all those things. It just doesn't make any, any sense. Make no mistake about it, the LG V60 is the phone you should buy in 2020. It's just too bad that so few people will. What do you think? Is the LG V60 something that you would be interested in? Uh, I still like compromises be damned, really impressive phone. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any questions down in the comments below, I really do appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos, I'm gonna link a couple of videos that are related to this video in some way and the position's right here in a second and uh so you can click on those and go watch those but until then my name is jason sometimes known as the jtl this is painfully honest tech so honest it hurts until the next time i'm out